Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Jeremiah Zantanetti. On today's Bible nugget, we're going to be looking at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 through 21. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God. The Bible calls the way of the Christian the new and living way. Why? Because in the Old Testament, all the sacrifices, although they covered sin for a while, the sin was not taken away. As we know in John chapter 1, verse 29, it says, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Many translations say sins, but the actual translation is sin. Why? Because it is talking about the one act, the one act that Adam did in the garden that brought all humanity under bondage. The Bible says that by one man, sin entered into the world, and by that one sin, death to all humanity. So understand that that one sin, everything you see in the world that is evil, was by one act of disobedience. But in the same chapter 5 of Romans, it says, and also by the one act of obedience of Jesus Christ dying on the cross brought all men back to righteousness. Now, we know that all men do not live in righteousness, but it's talking about Jesus Christ bringing the world back to himself by one act of righteousness, which is his sacrifice on the cross. And in the, in the Old Testament, we know that God required that the Ark of the Covenant be separate from everything else by putting a veil before it. After that, we have all the articles of the tabernacle. But the holy of holy place was where the Ark of the Covenant was, where the high priest can enter in only once a year to put blood on the mercy seat and therefore atone for the sins of Israel. What's interesting is that when Jesus Christ was hanging on the cross and he gave his last breath, the Bible says that the veil that was in the temple in that day was rent in two from top to bottom, not from the bottom to the top. Also because this veil was a very strong veil. Actually, they say, according to history, it would take a team of ox just to pull it, to break it, but yet it was easily torn from the top to the bottom because God came down to man and he opened the way so that we can come now into the Holy of Holies. The writer of Hebrews says, therefore, having boldness to enter into this holiest by the whole, by the blood of Jesus Christ. In other words, saying that Jesus Christ, when he died and shedding his blood and he took his last breath, the veil was rent. And now we were able to enter into the new and living way. That's why I want to encourage you today that because if you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord, you are living by the new and living way. You do not have to live by the old way of the flesh. And it says, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say his flesh. When the veil was ripped, his flesh, because we know that he was whipped, he was beaten, and he was a bloody sacrifice. Oh, the words of that great preacher, Charles Spurgeon, as he was preaching one day, he shouted from the rooftop and said, Oh, that bloody sacrifice. Wow, what words to live by. Oh, that bloody sacrifice. To this day, still rings what he said. And it's a new and living way consecrated. That means that it is sanctified. Let me give you the word consecrated. This is the word that is used in the Bible, in the New Testament, consecrated. And it means to dedicate. In a, in a simple fashion, it means to dedicate, to be renewed as a religious service after, after that which was, you know, a sacrifice. So we know that it was accomplished by Jesus Christ dying on the cross and his flesh was ripped for us. Therefore, just as the high priest went once a year into the holy place, holy of holies, to put blood on the mercy seat, Jesus is our mercy seat. He is the one that poured out his blood for us, and therefore we enter into 
through, into Christ through his flesh, meaning the sacrifice. Folks, I got great news for you. If you are in Christ, you are in the sacrifice. You are in Christ. You are in his death and you are in his resurrection. And folks, nothing can get in there to pull you out. I don't care what people say. I don't care what, listen, I don't care what people say, whether you sin or I sin, nothing can take us out. Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. We are in that sacrifice. Matter of fact, a verse of scripture comes to mind, and I want to read that just before we end here. But in Colossians, if you... uh, want to follow me, you can go to Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1. It says, If you then, being risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sits at the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on the things of the earth. You see, the new living way is not about the things of the earth, but having our hearts and our minds concentrated on Christ and the things of heaven. Watch this. For you are dead And your life is hid with Christ in God. Check that one out. You are in Christ and Christ, who is the Messiah, is in God. And we are in that perfect unity with him that cannot be broken. Hey, I got I got something I want you to think about just before uh, after I finish saying this. Watch this. You are dead and your life is now hid with God in Christ. When Christ, who is your life, shall appear. Then shall you also appear with him in glory. It doesn't tell us that we may we may be there or it's a possibility according to how we are, what we did. It says that <clears throat> our life is hidden in <clears throat> excuse me, in Christ, in God. And when he appears, we shall also appear with him in glory. But we are seated with him in heavenly places because we are in Christ our Lord. And therefore, we cannot be dismissed from that sacrifice. We are in that sacrifice. The Father looks at us not in our own works, but in the sacrifice of Christ. And he sits at the right hand of God the Father. And you are dead in your in your in your old pathway and you are living in Christ Jesus. And I want to say something now. I I often hear people say We have to work on our relationship with God. Folks, I got news for you. My relationship with God and your relationship with God, if you are in Christ, is that you are a son or daughter of Christ or God, the Holy Spirit. We are sons and daughters. That is our relationship. What we work on and we should continually work on is our fellowship with God. That can be broken because when we sin, fellowship can be broken. But the Bible says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So therefore, I do not work on a relationship with God. My relationship with him is that he is my father and I am his son. He is my Lord. He is my master. I am his servant. There is a relationship there that that happened because he shed his blood for me. But my intimacy with him has to be worked on every day. That's what you're working on. That's what we need to constantly look for and watch out for, that nothing takes us out of that fellowship with God because of sin. And as soon as we sin, we have the obligation and the opportunity to go before God and confess our sins and he restores our fellowship. The Bible says if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we, you and I, have fellowship with him in the light. Fellowship, notice it doesn't say relationship. Go ahead and look up that word. It is not relationship. It is fellowship with God. So we are living in a new way. We have a relationship with God that's eternal because we are in him. Come on now, Satan, no demon in hell can go in there and take you out. And you can't get out yourself. You are locked in. You are a prisoner of Jesus Christ. But we have fellowship with him as we walk in the light of his love, in the light of his word, and in the light of his grace and mercy. I want to wish you today a very spirit-filled, wonderful, 
in Christ, hidden with him, and manifested in glory, day, and may you be blessed. God bless you. Amen.